Yeah, man, you know, this Game of Thrones thing got me a little buzzing, man. Just because, you know, anybody willing to spend that much money to create some CGI dragons, man. I don't know what it costs, man. Somebody told me like a million dollars an episode or something crazy. So I said, you willing to spend that? I'm going to watch the doggone dragon. You know, it looks pretty real. Pretty dope, though. Pretty dope, man. Pretty dope. Hey, man. Dragons are pretty cool, man. Dragons are pretty cool. When you see, you know, these things, uh, you know, flying majestically, intelligently, and then you connect it to what's going on, you know, there's a reason why these, you know, I mean, once you start digging, it's in every single culture, you know, this dragon drops in every single culture, man. And uh, only in the West, right? Only in the Christi Christianized, you know, version of things was this dragon demonized. Before that, it was like, ah, he was, you know, hoarding gold, or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Guarding something, guarding some treasure, some something like that, you know what I mean? Or some angelic situation we're gonna get back on our angels and dragons you know what i mean we're just uh you know doing a quick drop man just you know looking at that last season of uh what episode one of the final season of game of thrones you know got some interesting drop man we, we talked about the comet thing and you know i'm just gonna you know first of all fair use and yoka boost bone i'm gonna play with uh Love to Gray Airy, you know what I mean? Fair use, fair use. This is, you know, real quick, real quick clip of this sister here. She breaking down Game of Thrones. She really, really into it. She really, really into it, you know. I'm just going to play this piece right here. Because it has everything to do with, if you've been uh, following the drop on the Takum Say series, the Comet, the Dragon. It's all connected, whether you're talking angels and dragons. Whether you're talking these signs in the sky, the the uh, blue kachina, red kachina, all these Mayan prophecies, you know, um, it all comes together. Whether you're talking Papu Va, Quetzalcoatl, feathered serpent or feathered dragon, which now they're saying all these dinosaurs used to have feathers, all right, and these feathers now they're saying well maybe they're closely related to birds. Or maybe we're talking feathered dragons, serpent. Either you're talking snake or you're talking dragon. You got to make your mind up when you speak in English. So when they put the word serpent on it, you have to differentiate the difference between a snake and a fire-breathing dragon. That's why we got all that you know stuff about the seraph, the seraphim, the six-winged high order of angelic energies, entities. So, this is beyond reptiles and Game of Thrones. That's just pretty much the lowest level of the dragon we talk about. When you talk angels, you talk about high etheric energetic dragons. Even, um, you know, they said in some mythologies in India and the Celtic stuff, even with the green dragons, these dragons were disappearing, you know what I'm saying, doing all kinds of stuff. So, they were old, um, etheric energies and so are we you know we are old etheric energies and our fall was their fall their fall is our fall everything seems to coincide the hijack always had to slay a dragon so you got that same energy today you got people that just want to slay things you know you got dragon slayers right but in reality you know what i mean the dragon is the fire the water the air the, the land the earth so all these things combined is what they call the last avatar or the, the last dragon like Bruce Leroy, you got the glow. This glow is directly the energy of our career. The fire, the d direct fire, you know what I mean? The smokeless fire, the Eleazar. You know what I mean? You got the lurk, the earth, the land. You got the Wata. Dragons are always connected with the water. Always connected with the ether, right? So... You know, these are the elements when they come together and then you can connect with the Chinese 
situation with the Native American situation for the indigenous American. Now, they keep showing little signs here, you know, little, uh, obviously they, they know what they're talking about. Even the creators of Game of Thrones, or I think the uh, creator of the book, George R.R. R. Martin, said, uh, you know, he didn't like the way they were depicting history falsely, so he's kind of reacting some things, you know, which it's up to you to decipher it. Whether you're talking about the children of the forest and Westeros and this Targaryen bloodline, you know what I mean? And how they took their dragons from some other, you know, uh, Aryan or noble race or whatever the case is. So all this stuff is connected. Of course, you got the whites beyond the wall. All right, the dead, the army of the dead. All right, so we got this invasion popping off. And uh, a lot of things are connected, man. But we talk comments and we talk dragons. And they put it in our face before. We're going to get that, but they put it in our face again. When we talk dragon, when we talk comment, we're talking dragon. Right? Remember the definition. When you look at a meteor, it says a fiery, luminous body or appearance flying. Fiery, luminous body. All right, so first you say, oh, yeah, okay, in a general sense, a body that flies or floats in the air is a meteor. It doesn't say space junk or space rock, right? But now we think space rock. And in this sense, it includes rain, hail, snow, but in a restricted sense in which it's commonly understood. Restricted, but less unrestricted. We're talking a fiery, luminous body. Or parents flying, we're seeing these things look like they are intelligently controlled, these so-called fireballs. Yeah, man, there's fireballs popping off all over the place. There's fireballs all over the place. This is the fireball.amsmedia.org. These are the latest pending fireballs, right? Minneapolis, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, you know, Colorado, Texas. All this is just happening now. France, everywhere, everybody's seeing comments. Everybody's seeing comments. Or is everyone seeing dragons? Nah, not every fireball is a certified dragon. <laughs> but we're starting to put together this comet fireball situation, and it's so prevalent, you have to ask are, are we just witnessing a bunch of dragons in the sky? That they're selling as space junk. But with a meteor, we're just talking a fiery, luminous body. Appearance of flying, floating in the atmosphere. Alright, we give this name to the brilliant globes or masses of matter. Masses of matter, which occasionally seem moving rapidly through the atmosphere. So it seems like they're being real, real slick in 1828. Oh, these masses of matter. These fiery luminous masses of matter appearing to be flying not just falling and dropping flying all right seen moving rapidly and which thrown off with loud explosions fragments that reach the earth and are called the falling stones this is when we get into the stone thing now watch this this is what we got you get it like it's the first time. Dragon. A fiery shooting meteor. So we're not stretching when we're like, what do you mean? A luminous body. No, they mean a dragon. They're talking dragon. Meteor. Dragon. And we already know when we talk about Prester John. And the priest king of the most high. You're also talking a. Meteor. <laughs> thrown from the clouds with such violence. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely violent for the hijack when a prester comes, when a meteor comes. Oh, boy, it's the fire. It's the fire. The neck swells when a person is angry. Remember, a dragon is a fierce or violent person, male or female. 
a person. So when you have a prester who's also a meteor or a dragon, he's fierce or violent towards the hijack, male or female. This man or woman is a dragon. Angels are dragons. Oh, look out for part four. We coming. We coming. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we know what a meteor is now, right? Let's see what it says uh, here in Game of Thrones. Yeah, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let my homegirl, uh, Gray Area, break this part down right fast for us. Let's go. Fair use in your caboose ball. I loved it, but the last image on the band it, it kind of confused me. It kind of threw me for a loop because there's a comet on there. There's a red comet or a comet with the uh, and the comet actually has like a dragon's face on it. And the all right, this is just the opening. So I'm not going to play much, you know, I don't want to play with these people, but you see the dragon, and now you see a comet, make sure you can see, all right, we got the comet, and the comet, when you look closely, has a dragon's face. This is the opening, the opening credits, man, the opening, you know, the opening play to the final season, and they've, ne they've never shown this before. So we've been digging on what? The fact that the dragon is the comet or the meteor. <coughs> <coughs> Let me get my alkaline. I'm about to start yelling. <laughs> nah, man, I'm falling back, man. I'm chilling, chilling. Nah, it's been uh, chilling, man. I saw this episode. I said, oh. oh, man, they saying what, man? So we've been talking about the comet meteor situation. We've been asking, you know, because over here we're not afraid to ask the right questions. We don't have to have the answers. It's like, okay, let me just ask the question, even if it sounds crazy. Are these comets, are these fireballs dragons? I mean, not all, some, when we talk about the the great comets like, like Haley, you know, Comet Haley and Tukumse, 1811, Napoleon, you know, we're going to touch on that again, but are these dragons? I mean, is there a reason why we have these priest kings, right? These prestors, right? These prestors. These prestors that are the comets or the shooting stars or the meteors. These priest kings, these prestors are the meteors, which are the dragons, right? Right? You got the story of Tukum says coming. The Black Sun prophecy. So there's a lot of prophecy around being born at the same time as these dragons are appearing or these comets in the sky. You know, we got, you know, get that series on Takum say that we did recently, man. Takum Sa. Takum Sa was an important Native American mystic, right? Which is what? Prophet? Priest? Priest king? Warrior? Alright. Military leader of the Shining? We're talking the whole connection with the Dragon Canoe, the Cherokee, all that, all right? The Israelites, Hebrews. He is today remembered as a great war or great hero who fought for freedom, all right? His name ominously means shooting star. Or he who walks across the sky, or another link said the Jaguar across the sky, Panther, Jaguar. Takum says brother, who was a religious leader known as the prophet. So we're talking Israelites. We're talking prophecy. We're talking 1811. Now, when you read his story, 
It said, you know, I might say it here somewhere. Of course, Dodge the Hijack. But when you read the story, then what? It says that he was born, that a comet appeared when he was born, and they knew that he was going to do something, you know, prophetic, you know. You know. And then this whole Black Sun thing also predicted a war because of this eclipse. And the war was launched by Governor Harrison in November. And they ended up, you know, losing this war. His brother got killed and all hell broke loose. And we don't know what happened after that, really. It seems like everything was reset around that time period. Like some, you know, between the Napoleon, because Napoleon also saw this comet in 1811 in, in Russia and apparently you know he was burned out of Russia you know what I'm saying so he ran out of there because it was some unusual fire going on in Russia and it ran Napoleon and his army out of there what does that have to do with Tecumseh's comet? Tecumseh's dragon? do you think it's the same dragon that ran Napoleon out of Russia? <laughs> Why not? It's a dragon. You think there's two separate dragons? Two separate comets? No, we're talking the same dragon. The same comet. Man, I mean, remember. You know, we're digging on the, uh, on, on the research, man. You know, we're, we're digging with the researchers here. Like, uh, Miss Elizabeth Warner in 2003, the Meteor Beliefs Project, She's digging on the research, not playing. This ain't play play. This is going into the Russian folk beliefs, into the Russian Dolls Dictionary, dragons as meteors or comets in Russian folk beliefs. And get right to it. Because we're just talking shooting stars like the Kumsa, right? His name means shooting star. A shooting star appeared when he was born. Don't in the scriptures it talks about you know, the star of Bethlehem, and, and, or, you know, the, that's in the New Testament, or, you know, some stars is always associated, some astrological signs, always associated, all right, so, thus the shooting star is linked with the belief, right, let's get it back, let's get it back, let's get it back. So again, the Vladimir Dahl's Etymological Dictionary of the Great Russian Languages, one of the most authoritative dictionaries of the 19th century. So we're not playing. Most authoritative dictionary, all right? Contains the generalized definition of meteor. Generalized definition of meteor. Generalized definition of meteor. Because when you're just looking at the definition of meteor, it's a generalized, or as they say, a restricted sense. It is restricted. It's generalized. It's any body that flies or floats in the air, man. How general can you get? It's generalized in a general sense. A body that flies or floats in the air is a meteor. Well, think of it like a dragon because you can look at that generally and say any atmospheric phenomenon is a dragon. When you feel the wind, you feel the dragon. When you feel the heat of the sun, you feel the dragon. The rain, the, all, all of it is dragon. Remember in uh, the book of Jubilees when it's talking the Genesis story, the angel of the frost, the angel of the wind, all these things are created. The dragon of the wind. The dragon of the hell. The dragon of the snow. Look at the meteor definition. In a sense, it includes rain, hell, snow, da, da. These are all, this is all dragon, man. This is all dragon. This is all angel. It's a general sense. But what does it say? In the Russian etymological dictionary, the Vladimir Dahl. One of the most authoritative dictionaries of the 19th century contains the generalized definition of meteor as any atmospheric phenomenon. Any atmospheric, anything in the atmosphere is a meteor. 
Well, then the dragon is definitely a meteor because it's flying in the atmosphere. Now, meteors may thus be aqueous, water dragons, igneous, fire-breathing dragons, aerial, just flying dragons or luminous, glowing, literally glowing fireballs. Fireball report. These are your fireballs of the day, folks. These are your igneous. <laughs> These are your luminous meteors, right? Luminous. This is the fireball report. So we must be talking luminous. Under igneous meteors, Dow mentions thunderstorms, fire pillars, balls, stones, whereas aerial meteors may be winds. Whirlwinds miss the definition of comet in Dow's dictionary is a heavenly body which in comparison to others is of huge mass. Those spares, nebulous, transparent, they can disappear. Sometimes it may be seen to have a nucleus. Sometimes it may be seen to have a nucleus. This is an actual picture of the comet, or, yes, it's the Great Comet of 1811, so we're talking Tecumseh's Comet, we're talking uh, Napoleon's Comet, it's, it's labeled as both, it's the same comet, sometimes seen to have a nucleus, right? You see that right there, you can probably see it better, hold up, nah, nah, you can see, you can, hey man, go back, man. Go back, man. Come on, man. Stop playing, man. So you can see the nucleus right there. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I mean, you know, I mean, you heard of Dragon Ball Z. You know what I mean? It's like when you go in at supersonic speeds, you ain't got to be using your wings. These are certain type of etheric energies, man. And sometimes they go straight. Sometimes they start curving and zigzagging and doing all kind of things. You know, Dragon Ball Z, let's go. Now, the interesting kick. The definition of comet in Dow's Dictionary is a heavenly body, which in comparison to others is of huge mass, though sparse, nebulous, transparent sometimes. Seem to have a nucleus while the surrounding area forms something like a tail. Read it with me. Let's get it bigger. Surrounding area forms something like a tail. Beard. Yes, a beard. Or tangled locks. Star with a tail. This is the definition of Comet in Dahl's Dictionary in 1955. It didn't say, a, you know, some generalized atmospheric nothing. We're talking about what? We're talking about cometas. Heavenly body. Something like a tail, beard, tangled locks, star with a tail. A star with a tail is also referred to under the entry star. So whether you're looking cometa or comet, meteor, you're talking a tail, beard, tangled locks, star with a tail. Even if you look up star, you're going to get the same thing. Tail, beard, tangled locks. Tangled locks, kind of like never in the story, right? So this is what we got to bring us to Game of Thrones. I mean, the Game of Thrones, after doing that recon, you know, 
throughout the years. All right, we, we've been digging on this stuff for years just for them to throw this in our face on their final season. Comet with the uh, and the comet actually has like a dragon's face on it, and then there's and the comet, the comet, she's talking fast, but the comet has a dragon's face. In other words, the comet is a dragon. Beard. It probably has locks. <laughs> Star with a tail. They're just letting you know that this is what it is. Not that the comet literally has a dragon head because the comet doesn't need to have a dragon head. Not when the comet can just appear to be like this to you. But they're letting you know that this, in reality, is this. That they're, they're the same thing in different forms. And this is throwing her off because she's really into this. She's really into Game of Thrones. But look how she reacts when it comes to this picture. I loved it, but the last image on the band, it, it kind of <laughs> confused me. It kind of threw me for a loop because there's a comet on there. There's a red comet or a comet with the, uh, and the comet actually has like a dragon's face on it. And then there's dragons. So I was wondering if this was to represent the birth of dragons. But then again, there are four dragons here and not three or two. There are four. So I don't know. What do you make of that? I, I... What do we make, my sister? Well, I think Game of Thrones already kind of, already kind of say what they had to say when it comes to you know this. And again, copyright disclaimer. We're just doing criticism, some comedy, some news reporting, some teaching, some scholarship, some research. Don't even trip, man. Fair use, man. We're just we're just using stuff for scholarship, man. No trip. But Game of Thrones already talked about. How do you feel about comets? Don't y'all remember this? I think this might have been season one. Of the man talking about the comet. So it's an omen. The same red comet. It's an omen. Now, isn't there a red Kachina omen with the Mayan prophecy situation? So that red Kachina is talking about the same thing. The writers are using all of this information. Of the man talking about the comet. So it's an omen. So that means Rob will win a great victory in the South. Did they? I heard some other fools say it's Lannister Red. I mean, the Lannisters will rule all seven kingdoms if we're long. I heard a stable boy say it's the colour of blood. Mark the death of your father. The stars don't fall from men. Red Comet means one thing, boy. Dragons. The red comet means one thing, boy. Red comet means one thing, boy. Dragons. From men. Red comet means one thing, boy. Dragons. The red comet means one thing, sucker Tony. Means one thing, man. Dragons. The red comet means one thing. These comets mean one thing. Dragons. And they'll tell you. They'll tell you if you pay attention. The red comet means one thing, boy. <laughs> Dungeons and the throne. I loved it. But the last image on the band, it, it kind of confused me. It kind of threw me for a loop because there's a comet on there. There's a red comet or a comet with the, uh, and the comet actually has like a dragon's face on it. And then there's dragons. So I was wondering if this was to represent the birth of dragons. But then again, there are four dragons here and not three. Or Yeah, man. The red comet means one thing, boy. Dragons. <laughs> These comet means one thing, man. Whether you're talking dragon is a fiery shooting meteor. Everybody's telling you this. 
You just have to pay attention. And when you see them or when you see footage or you hear, or hey, you don't have to stand outside. Just go to the fireball reports and you see that these fireballs are being reported all the time. Love to Miss D and the Copper Color Awakening. The original fireball. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's just page one. This just page one. This is all happening now. Fireball, fireball, fireball. Dragon, 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 dragon. A meteor thrown from the clouds with such violence that by collision is set on fire. When we talk our priest kings, it has everything to do with the comet. It has everything to do with the meteor or the star. Remember they said in the Dawes Dictionary that the term star with the tail is also referred to under the entry star. So when you read in the scripture and some stars related to somebody's birth, it's a dragon situation. When we talk Joshua, the real Joshua, oh yeah, we're talking star with a tail. We're talking dragon. We're talking dragons being present. We're talking dragon priests, priest kings. I mean, this goes back again to the dragon frequency of Mu. And we're warring again with the same snake vibration. Again, Adam and Eve, you know, you got this serpent who gets cursed to be on its belly. But what was it doing before it was cursed to be on its belly? If it wasn't slithering already, what kind of serpent was it? A skipping serpent? Was it doing the running man? The cabbage patch? Was it walking around? Was it a flying serpent? Oh, you mean it was a dragon? And this dragon got cursed to have to be a snake. Yeah, man. Star with a tail. Beard, tangled locks. Tangled locks. So yeah, you know, I got everything to do with Takum saying this war of 1812 we need to get back into, man. I mean, so much great stuff. You know, the the alliances, man, the, the real Cherokee alliances, man. When we talk Shawnee, man, but Pata, Watomi, Ajibwa, you know what I mean? We're talking Muscogee, Seminole, Choctaw, Cherokee, Chickasaw, man. The native leaders who emerged in response to this expansion shared a single cover concern that of protecting tribal lands, man, because your dragons helped you protect your tribal land. You know, we got that drop from Miss D in the Copper Color Awakening. Talking about the American Revolutionary War and how these Iroquois were breeding dragons. And they breeded 32 dragons in New York City alone. Now you got Phineas and all this stuff popping out. Free Phineas, man. Free Phineas, man. Free the big homie Phineas who's in lockdown. We do it for the prisoners. We do it for the captives. The big homie Phineas is in lockdown. Right now in Fort Tryon State Park in Upper Manhattan. Free Phoenix, man. We got you, bro. We got you, bro. Man, you better go get that drop, man. Go get that old Dragons and Dragonfly series, man. We, we've been talking about this, man, for a minute. But now, you know, it's time to hit him where it hurt. It's time to see the real, you know, so... You know, when you're digging on this Tecumesh and this confederate confederation under Tecumesh. By 1811, Tecumseh had built a confederation of more than two dozen Indian nations, all of whom hoped to stop the American settler encroachment. To be hijacked free, man. Against the invader. Now you're in the colonial corporate. 
So it's very important when you talk about your priests, man. Your prestors. Your dragons. The fireballs that Hawaii sends to guard and get our people to freedom. Because that's all we're talking about here. To stop the hijack encroachment on our lands. And there's signs that take place. Over here, this was a sign that, hey, they were, we was about to go through a long haul. And now we are seeing signs that the long haul is over. And dragons, dragons on the wall. Dragons, dragons, fireball. You choose which side of the war you are. Because it's a frequency war. The price is going up. You already know, man, that red comet. Bob will win a great victory in the South. Did they? Men. Red comet means one thing, boy. <coughs> Dragons. Oh, man, that red comet. Red comet means one thing, boy. Dragons. And that's what we see now. And that's what's coming to light, man. Dragons on the wall. Hey, huh?